Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 101 of Real Quick from the Real Talk podcast. It's crazy. We're already in triple digits, and we're just going to keep on rolling. We'll be at 200 before we know it. It's, it's just insane how fast it's flying by. But today, we are going to be doing a review of 28 Days Later, directed by Danny Boyle, written by Alex Garland, starring Killing Murphy, um, what's his name, Brennan Gleason, uh, and uh, many others. But uh, this was recommended by Remy Walker for this week on the Patreon review, kind of going with our theme of the horror month we have and also we've been kind of in a zombie theme in terms of what we've been talking about on the podcast the last couple of weeks sci-fi theme as well sci-fi as well perfectly perfectly in there and obviously it's a big year for killian murphy so might as well keep it rolling with him um I, of course as always check out the patreon links in our description uh whether you're on audio on your know, spotify or apple or if you're watching us on youtube right now it's all in the links no matter if you're on video or audio it's all down there so go check out our Patreon, see if there's any uh, tiers that are interesting to you. I know a lot of people absolutely have loved being in the Patreon from all of our patrons, and we appreciate them endlessly. But let's get into Remy Walker's suggestion this week for Review in 28 Days Later, which I had never seen. We mentioned on the main Real Talk episode this week that 28 years later sounds like it's coming. Obviously, 28 weeks later has already come after this. I think it's actually 28. I think it's 28 months. It's 28 months or years. Uh, it's true. they got to save room for the fourth, and it'll be 28 <laughs> decades, yeah. 28 centuries. 28 um, centuries. <laughs> uh, crazy. But, but the synopsis for this is uh, it's real cut and dried. It's four weeks after a mysterious, incredible, uh, incurable virus spreads throughout the UK. A handful of survivors try to find sanctuary. So... Obviously, there's like a zombie outbreak of infected people, and it's just people trying to survive. And as the name suggests, 28 days later, after this virus breaks out, this is where the story kind of picks up. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll start with our overall just high level thoughts, and then we'll kind of break into going through the story from kind of start to finish and discuss it a little deeper. But uh, I'll start with Seth. Seth, what's your overall kind of review and uh, score for this movie? Yeah, so 28 Days Later is a film, probably been one of my favorite zombie films ever for. A uh, number of years. It's very recognized to be one of the great, great um, British horror feats of the past, you know, few decades. I think it's kind of it was one that got passed down to me. You know, came out in the what two thousand four, five. When did it come out? Two thousand two. It says on IMDb, but I think it says two thousand three on Letterbox. I don't know. Okay, so yeah, around that time, and I think um, it was such a huge feat, and I think it really was in the the time when zombie films were so prevalent. You know, after um, George Romero's films, and then you know around the time of obviously you know you like Shaun of the Dead, you had Wreck, you had um, obviously Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead, and it was really a point where I think we've kind of passed that now, where zombie movies aren't as prevalent as they once were. Um, and I think this is you know, the highest end of it, in my opinion. I think it's it's gritty, it's brutal. You get the real sense of, of family and belonging to a certain group and understanding that. And I think the cast do a really good job of portraying that. You know, you've got uh, Killian Murphy, you've got um, Brendan Gleeson, but then you've also got like Christopher Eccleston, who was obviously the doc, you know, Doctor Who from probably 10 to 15 years ago, um, who is very well known around here. And I think it works in such a way where you can kind of really feel the emptiness of the world and feel how isolated everything is i love the opening shot i think the soundtrack is absolutely perfect for really emerging your immersing yourself into this world where everything has gone south when you really feel that similar to like a children of men obviously it's not to the same extent you know children of men is zombies or anything but of how the world's going of the gritty nature i think it's highlighted by its brutal and dark cinematography um I know a lot of people don't like the fact it looks, it's very fucking dark and it probably does look like the only title you mentioned this, you'll go on to it, but the old and the near 2000s, it definitely does because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't low budget. I think it was maybe five to 10 million, five million, I think I checked the other day, but it was to a point where, you know, it's pretty, I think it works with the themes of the film. I think it works with what they're trying to handle. I think it really makes you feel isolated, makes you feel paranoid. I think there's some good scares in this. And I, I really like zombie films in general. I think this is the the highest tier of it or, or near about. Um, I think it comes in like my top five. So 20 Days Later comes in at like a, a 4.5 for me. So very, very high. I've always liked 20 Days Later. I think it's a fantastic film. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. George, what are your review on 28 Days Later? Yeah, I, I'm just as high as it. Uh, high on it as Seth is. I, I I fucking love this. I think this is one of the first zombie movies that came out there and really tried to like revitalize the the zombie sh sub genre of horror. Um, it's very grounded in reality, which I don't think we saw prior to this point a lot of. Um, no disrespect, obviously, to George Romero's um, Night of the Living Dead and 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 you know any other zombie movie that came before him, but I just think Twenty Eight Days Later, Danny Boyle just did such a good job at making this world feel real um tyler I'll, I'll use your line from the creator this world felt lived in 
Um, like it really did feel beaten down and, and broken up. And, and like Seth said, um, it, it just felt lonely, especially like the opening couple of shots right after Killian Murphy's character leaves the hospital. There's just wide shots uh, of, of the of the city um, and it's quiet. Uh, and there's this eerie, you know, this this light lo-fi violin going on. So it just makes it feel very, you know, uh, uh, paranoid, but also just very lonely. Um, so this is a this is such a good zombie movie to me. Like I said, it revitalized the subgenre of horror. These these zombies, they're not they're not walking slow the way, you know, you typically expect zombies to. Um, obviously, World War Z pulled a lot of inference from 28 Days Later, giving these zombies like just making them like these athletic menaces, um, which also just adds so much to, to, to something like this movie because um, it, it really forces our characters to like think on the spot and really adapt their situation um, just, just right in that moment. Um, we'll get into it in spoilers, some heartbreaking scenes, um, or at least particularly one very heartbreaking scene for me, um, in my opinion. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, this is one of the best zombies movies out there. Um, it might be for me, number two to Shaun of the dead. I'd have to really look at that ranking. Um, but yeah, I, I, I love this movie. Yeah. So this is the first watch for me and, uh, none of you know my score if I liked it, didn't like it or whatever, yeah. but, um, yeah, no, I, I dug this movie. My, my official score for the final, uh, uh for the first reveal is a 9.1 out of 10 for 4.5 stars. Really wow. love this movie. had a blast with it. Um, I'm so happy right now. I actually, no. <laughs> for some reason, didn't think you like it that much. I really, really, really like this movie. I, I think it could cool. even go up on rewatch. Probably my, I mean, I haven't seen a ton, but probably my favorite zombie movie of all time. Yeah, it was just so good. Like I, the world that George put it perfectly, it felt lived in, felt real, felt raw. Um, the thing I appreciate most about it was this is a zombie movie. It is, you know, a sci-fi horror, but there's so much deeper themes here. Like I've, I think there's very clear symbolism here that the zombies are kind of portraying I mean, we see at the beginning and we'll get into kind of more like discussion of the film, but clearly about like kind of group think rage, like a, the quote unquote virus that can spread over a population when they're divided for political issues. Um, but so I just found so much nuance throughout the entire film while also being just a Definitely, very enjoyable yeah. survival film. Um, not like the scares are kind of few and far between. It didn't kind of throw the zombies in your face 24 seven, which I liked because it allowed us to have a lot more real and emotional and raw of a story where all these characters felt developed and I felt a relationship and attachment to each of them. Um, but yeah, 9.1 out of 10 for 4.5 stars. I really, really like this movie. So shout out Remy Walker for recommending it because I really dug this movie and I'm Is, excited to get, Oh, go ahead. Would this saying? not be, Oh no, I was going to ask you. I thought that you would have mentioned this on our ranking, but then I forgot mm -hmm. we did post yeah. 10. Doesn't matter. Right. This post has to be like one of your highest horrors ever. No, like, or, or up there. yeah, yeah. It's, it's gotta be, uh, let's see. It would be, I think Get Out would probably be the only one I have over it, but I, I think I could see this reaching oh. over Get Out eventually. Who knows? Um, maybe not, but I really like this movie and I'm going to rewatch it for sure. And I'm really excited to kind of get into the meat of the movie here and start talking about it a little deeper with you guys. Um, but kind of just to start... Think, the, yeah, go ahead. I was just... I think um, I was able to go on to, but like... Um, especially when it comes to the commentary, it's just not really much I could say now, but especially with the ending, it really you know showcases how like... And there's a lot of themes on institutionalization, how they treat people and and trust, which obviously we'll go into because I think the ending is very, very impactful. Um, but yeah, there's a lot, there is a lot of nuance in this, especially, you know, for a, a zombie film. But I think it really, really works in, in pretty much every way. Yeah, carry on. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it's one of those that sometimes movies that have deeper meanings, you kind of they re reveal themselves over time and you start to pick up on the meanings throughout. But I think from the very opening scene, it's very obvious that they're going for a parallel here to politics and uh you know kind of w western culture and just real world like you said western because, I mean, issues yeah the way that it starts is the monkey in captivity that is being subjected to watch all these horrific news events and this crazy world events of like militaries taking over innocent people dying mass murders just all this just horrific news footage and then you have obviously the human rights activists that come in and try and save the monkey and but then that monkey ends up turning on them and being what causes this initial outbreak so i just feel like from right at the get-go immediately they're saying like yeah there's a zombie movie but we're clearly going for something a lot more political and a lot more deeper here and i thought that was such yeah. a great way to start the movie yeah no, i agree i think 
I think it really sets the tone for for the darkness and the political the commentary to come, especially when it comes to the end as well. I, I love the you know the opening shot where he's kind of walking across the bridge. I think that's so so impactful when it comes to the soundtrack as well. And I think the opening scene with the monks as well is kind of hard to watch, but it has you know a lot to say. And I do think also I've I mentioned this at the end, but I think this is uh, I've seen a lot of I think I've might have seen nearly all of Danny Boyle's films. I think this is his, his strongest work by far, especially thematically, along with potentially like Slumdog Millionaire. But obviously, we'll go into that entirely if you want to run through the film. Sunshine. Actually, yeah, I haven't seen Sunshine. I, I don't know. I think I have seen Sunshine, but maybe one day. Maybe one day. You should watch, watch it. it. You should watch it. But yeah, no, that, that's, that's one thing that I, I, I get. See. That's him. Yeah, I, I, he his range is crazy. I was literally looking at his filmography today. His range is like out of control, and and surprisingly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I think there's a lot of you know similarities between Twenty Eight Days Later and Sunshine, which is weird because one of them is a space epic and the other one is a I guess very low budget um, zombie apocalypse movie. But there's a lot of um, he he has uh, clearly this. Thing with humanity and and the direction that he wants to kind of take humanity, and he likes to put his characters in very specific situations, and 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 just allow the characters to kind of adapt to their situation as best they can. It's a very interesting look at, um, you know, the dynamic of the way he writes his screenplays, and the, or I guess in this case Alex Garland, the way he wrote his screenplay, which I guess attracted Danny Boyle to want to direct this. But there's a lot of thematic elements here in terms of like loneliness and grief and isolation. And then and he also just, like I said, he he's very good at just putting his characters in uncomfortable situations and, and letting us as audience members very much engage with his films. We feel like we're right there with Killian Murphy and in this setting um, it just seems to be like a very Danny Boyle thing to do between sunshine and 28 days later. Um, believe it or not, I think Slumdog Millionaire is like the odd one out in his filmography. Like that's the one that I don't think like makes sense to have been placed in his filmography. It, it's a weird film for him to have picked up compared to what he had done previously. Um, but yeah, overall, Danny Boyle is like slowly climbing my charts of like my favorite filmmakers. I'm happy that we picked this one this week because I've been due for a rewatch of 28 Days Later forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at this point, the the monkeys kind of caused this outbreak that uh, Danny Boyle mentioned in an interview. He kind of modeled the behaviors of what the humans or the infected are based off of like Ebola symptoms, as well as he kind of mentioned he was kind of tired. He felt the brain zombie eating brain storyline was a kind of a trope that's been played out at that point. So he didn't really want to go for that one. Um, but at this point, we see Killian Murphy wake up in the hospital bed 28 days later. He's completely naked. He has like his head shaved, so we don't really know what was going on with him. Um, clearly some kind of surgery or something inside of his head. He might have been in a coma, which kind of makes sense based on what he finds from his parents later. But Kelly Murphy wakes up and he's like, I have no clue what the hell happened. I'm naked. I'm alone. I'm confused. Kind of just basically puts on a hospital gown and goes on his way and just tries to figure out what's going on. And that's where we start to see these infected people in the church and, again, just I think it's no coincidence. He finds a bunch of people like in a church. And I feel like it's a lot of moments you see crosses in this movie. There's a lot of religious influence in this movie about how group think is very apparent, not only in politics, but also religion. And uh, he kind of just goes on searching, trying to figure out what's going on. And he eventually runs across uh, what's her name. Like the, act, like the name of the person in the movie, um, the girl he finds, do you remember her name? Oh, hold on. I have letterboxed open right here. Yeah. I'm not remembering right now. Uh, Selena, 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 Selena. So he meets up with Selena and she kind of wait. So there's another guy too. So Selena and one other dude, I can't remember his name, but then he kind of finds them and he doesn't understand the gravity of the situation at this point. He's kind of like, Oh, was I got to go find my parents? Like they're not that far away. They're in Deptford. I'm going to go find them. And they're like, dude, you're going to die. Like there's a reason we stick together and you're going to be screwed. Um, and slowly he eventually starts to realize how serious the situation is, as obviously um, we are in the spoiler section of this podcast. So I'll just pop that up that uh, the guy that Selena was initially with gets killed by a, a zombie that kind of breaks through the window and uh, attacks Killian Murphy. And then they all kind of fight it off, but they find out that he gets bitten. And as Selena mentions, you have like basically like not even time to take a breath. It's like immediately once they get infected, you got to kill him. You can't hesitate immediately. You got to take him down. And then at that point, it's just Jim and Selena going on their way, trying to survive in this world. Um, and then eventually they come across Brendan Gleeson where there's that scene where Brendan Gleeson kind of brings them in when they're kind of being chased. He has kind of riot gear in, he has his daughter with him. And then it kind of leads us to the whole discussion of like who needs who more. Cause once they kind of survive that little tiff, it's like, 
just Brendan Gleeson did to save them, but like he has a little daughter. He's kind of an older guy, not the most in shape. So there's kind of a discussion of like, do you keep him with you? Do you not? And I felt like that was a very interesting part of the movie because obviously I can see why keeping Brendan Gleeson and his daughter would be a very much a hindrance to you. But also I feel like if I was in that situation, I would want like as many people with me as possible, even though I feel like strategically it's probably not a bad or good idea because then it's like easier to spot. But I don't know. I just wouldn't want to be alone. <laughs> like I would want more people with me. Just, just get a dog. Exactly. The dog move. Like the little girl. Like, I'd be like, oh, two just people that are dog. easy to kill. Great. Come with us. You're the bait. Like if anything goes wrong. Um, I didn't even, I didn't know Brendan Gleeson was in this movie because if you look at IMDb, like that's it only shows like on the front page, like the top three actors in it or like yeah. the main three. And his name wasn't on there. So he was just complete surprised when he came on. But I was like, oh, sweet. Um, but I don't think this is, I'm, I'm sure this is killing, not killing Murphy's debut, but he was definitely not a known actor at this no, time. Oh, yeah. This was stupid early in his career. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm going to pull his up as IMDb yeah, or Letterboxd just quick. Did the same thing. Let's yeah, see. Let's where's, see. Because this is 2002. Date. Looks like he was in some stuff starting in 1998, but nothing that's anything I've heard of. Yeah, 20 Days Later is definitely the first thing that's of any note in his filmography. And even after that, up until Batman Begins, he doesn't really have anything yeah. super notable. So he's definitely pretty underground at this point. Um, interestingly, so from the IMDb fun facts, the original choice to play Jim was Ewan McGregor. Um, but Ewan McGregor was uh, supposed to be in a movie called The Beach in 2000s, the two years before this, which was also Danny Boyle. Him and Danny Boyle had a relationship. So Ewan McGregor was billed to be in this as the lead as well. But then him and Danny Boyle had a falling out during production of The Beach. So then they weren't friends anymore. So he wasn't going to be in this movie. And then actually in The Beach, Ewan McGregor was supposed to be the lead, but he was replaced by Leonardo DiCaprio, who was also young and early in his career at that point. Huh. Uh, but it was post-Titanic. So obviously he was a big name. Yeah. And uh, But after Ewan McGregor was booted out of the main role of 28 Days Later, Ryan Gosling was offered the role of the lead, but he had a scheduling oh. conflict. And I don't even know what the hell he was even in at that point. Like, yeah, I in didn't even know he was like, two? Yeah. When the if, fuck did like the notebook come out? Oh, six. That was yeah. Like, and I feel like that was kind of the big thing that put him on the map. I know yeah. he was like a child star in like TV shows and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. That's, that's a weird, like Ryan Gosling. But I mean, just the fact that like you and McGregor and, Lee, and Ryan Gosling were attached to that main role and then it ended up going to Kelly Murphy. is just kind of crazy that so many of those, so much star power for this role, movie that wasn't the biggest budget, but it ended up yeah. being quite a success. Um, but, and then, uh, so at this point they're together with all four of them are together. Um, I don't know what, so you gotta refresh me if either of you know, I think Seth had to step away, but just, is this at the point where Kelly Murphy leaves them and goes to find his family? Or is that after Brendan Gleeson no, after, dies? Uh, after Gleeson dies. Yeah. Which okay, is so, that, that, that's the heartbreaking scene I was fucking talking about, man. Mm -hmm. Damn. When he like pushed his daughter away and he's like, get out come near me and then the shot of the blood like dropping into his eyes like one of the coolest shots mm -hmm. so cool ev. <laughs> yeah that was just such a tragic scene because it's one of those things that like we mentioned and they mentioned often in the movie you can't hesitate yeah. someone gets infected you got to kill them yeah. um another on the imdb fun facts page that scene was actually shot on on 9 11 so danny boyle was like it was a really weird scene to have to film like on a day like of obviously such global yeah. turmoil um, but so yeah, this would be filmed in 2001. But yeah. Sucked. Cause I really like Brandon Gleason as an actor, but also really liked his character. I didn't want to see yeah. him go. Um, and then at this point, so then this is the point where once he, he gets, so they do hesitate on killing him, but then they have like those military yeah. geared up dudes shoot him down before they have the chance to make the decision Pop right, in the right, chest. right in front of his daughter, just super heartbreaking scene. And, uh, at this point, this is when they're kind of with the military people who end up not being that nice of guys. They end up being pretty shitty dudes. Yeah, absolute douchebags. Yeah, they, uh, unsurprisingly, uh, there's a woman and there's not, uh, Selena's with him and there's not many women left in this world at this point. They haven't seen one in a while. So as horrible men do, they, they obviously are very attracted to her and try and take advantage of her in the ways I'm sure you can all picture in your mind. <clears throat> and Killian Murphy kind of has to protect her from that. But I don't really, can't really remember exactly the timeline. I don't know when he exactly goes to his parents' house. But that was the most heartbreaking scene of the whole movie for me when like they left him a note because he was in a coma at the beginning of the movie. And we see that they took alcohol and pills to end their lives. So they didn't have to live through this world. So I can't remember exactly what the note said. It was like, we left you sleeping or like, so, I'm going to try and find it. But that was the most heartbreaking note in the movie for me. 
was his parent with him finding the note his parents left them basically saying that they killed themselves and that they hope he or they said like we're going to sleep and we hope you don't wake up or something like that because like it's just such a shitty world um i don't know it's was, it was put very well i'm gonna try and find it uh but yeah i don't know and i can't like so when did he go to his parents because i'm forgetting when this is in the timeline like when did he leave the group or did they go with him to his to deptford which is where his parents lived like I'm Selena, Selena went with him. It was after okay. Gleason died, after like that whole dinner scene with the, <laughs> um, with the army men, where they were like, uh, what did he? With one of the main army dudes, like, was mad about the food tasting shitty, and then he looks at Selena and he was like, "Oh, you, 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 probably can cook well, right?" Or some <laughs> stupid shit. Or he said that the Gleason's daughter or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was post that mm-hmm. when he kind of okay. decided. And I, f- I found the note. So just such a chilling note to leave and to find where your parents it says with endless love, we left you sleeping. Now we're sleeping with you. Don't wake up. Like just such a just chilling note. Like yeah. it's just such, a, such an emotional scene. Um, they didn't get to see him come back to life and now he had to find them dead. So just a heartbreaking scene for, for Jim, our character played by Killian Murphy to find his parents dead like that. Obviously that was kind of like the beacon of hope throughout the whole movie. He just wanted to go to Deptford and find his parents. And uh, the ultimate fate ended up being that they took their own lives. So they didn't have to survive in this uh, just world that was deteriorating yeah. in front of our very eyes. Um, but yeah, then at that point, uh, I'll let someone else kind of cover the ending. So basically at this point, the military guys try and take on Selena and uh, Kelly Murphy stops that. And then uh, I'll let one of you kind of take it over and just discuss the ending in the movie from there. <laughs> Seth just dipped. So I guess it's on me. Oh shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Peace out Seth. Um, yeah. The, the ending I, I think is uh, again, I, I think the strongest suit of this um, movie is just how grounded in reality it is. Cause we're kind of, all these characters are making decisions that we could absolutely see ourselves making. And then I love the, inclusion of like the shitty military guys because i think that plays to like the idea of a zombie apocalypse so well like that's exactly what you would kind of expect in this situation where these guys feel like they have unlimited power obviously they're coming Mm -hmm. across people on these roads that have nothing they have bags of nothing they have bags of cans of food and that's it and they're the ones with the power they're the ones that know they can protect everyone so they're kind of the ones that are the douchiest because they know that they can kind of get away with it because they're the ones that everyone needs um what parts of like specifically do you want to touch on is there anything like specific like, in the ending that you're i'm kind of blanking on like what the very final scene was because i like i can't remember if this is the final shot or if this was like a final shot that cut to black and there's more after it because the timeline is just already scrambling my head even though i just watched a couple days ago but i remember there being a shot where they're driving away from the military compound yeah and they break through the fence and like killing murphy and uh, selena kind of fly forward um, but based on how fast they're going to hit and just a fence, I, I don't imagine they died from that, but I know it cut to black after that, but did that end the movie or was after the movie when they showed like the helicopters going over like the green fields or whatever. And there's something over a radio com or something like, I can't remember what the final shot was. I do remember like the, obviously them flying forward in the vehicle when they're escaping, but did yeah. it just end there? No, 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 no. Okay, they, okay. They, 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 they drove off. Um, and then that's when what you said, they there's a cloth banner with the words hello yeah, got it. Yep. um and, and that's where they um that's where the movie ends where they kind of like watch the the jet fly by and obviously assuming that they're saved um yeah that's that's the mm-hmm. ending of the movie which is just i guess leaving off a heartbreaking movie on like a slightly optimistic note um mm-hmm. i guess it kind of is like same thing with like uh Oh my god, I'm blank on the name. Like World War Z. Mm-hmm. Like the movie ends with like Brad Pitt's character like walking down that long hallway and it just kind of ends on like this optimistic note which I feel like a lot of zombie movies end on after just being sad and tragic for like an hour and a half straight. Have you seen 28 Weeks Later? No, I haven't. Okay, I'm I'm wondering if like cuz obviously it's 28 weeks after the initial outbreak happened. So not like it's like half a year since this yeah. movie would have taken place and nothing crazy would have changed because I was going to say 28 days later, obviously ends on somewhat of an ambiguous note. Like you're hopeful you'd imagine the plane saw their note, but you don't ever end up seeing like the plane pick them up and them going to some haven of some like fortress as you're going to survive. Yeah. So I was going to say like, I wonder what happens next, but obviously anyone listening to this who's seen 28 weeks later probably knows exactly what has happened <laughs> next, but yeah, I have no, no idea. I haven't seen it. And it's not by Danny Boyle or Alex Garland or any no. of the same cast, I believe. So I think it's just kind of same universe, but a separate movie completely. Yeah. But 
I haven't seen it. I don't know if Seth's seen it. I'm going to see if he has it logged on Letterboxd 28 weeks later. I have I know, it logged. I, I just don't have it. Ray, I haven't seen it in oh. years. Um, Seth has a three. Yeah, it's definitely a lot lower rated on average than 28 yeah, days later. But Kind of expected. That feels like a Sicario 2 type of movie. <laughs> Mm, exactly but no i really dug it i think there's a lot about like groupthink and how it can take over population when it comes to both politics and religion like you mentioned with the military guys being included um shout out your favorite movie the happening it's kind of that <laughs> scene in the happening where they see uh freaking what's his name he's, he's sitting right there crying jeremy strong Damn jeremy strong God. is like a military guy and they're like oh look it's the military we're saved which you kind of get some, similar to that in this where it's like oh sweet these guys with all, all this ammunition and guns and uh fortresses were, were saved and we're fine and then you realize like the power goes to their head they're shitty people and this this is not the situation they want to be in they're still they're gonna have to go and fend on their own so they're not actually relying on the government to save them this time and there's also that scene that just reminded me of where killing murphy earlier on in the movie is like there's got to be a government like there's always a government they're going to be okay <laughs> and like they're going to protect us so it's like very much hitting those themes of politics and how we are as citizens just like whether we like it or not we are reliant on the government to yeah. make our society work but when shit hits the fan it seems like they do leave us behind and don't really save us so kind of basically the whole theme of this movie going here but yeah i dug it the thing that i want to mention for sure is the score i loved it's like a hard rock like early 2000s alternative rock just score throughout with electric guitars i thought it was super sick and uh, it was shot entirely on digital it's one of the first like mainstream films that was shot on digital and i mentioned i texted you guys i was like this movie looks like it's way before 2002 because it just does not <laughs> look good um uh, and he said he did it on purpose to make it look like more jarring but yeah like it's may, i'm glad they addressed that in like a yeah. fun facts list because i was like i i did not think this movie looked good from a film perspective in terms of like just it, what i saw on my screen it kind of looks like a little found it's not but it looks like a little found mm -hmm. footage with just like how grainy and shaky the camera is but i also think that it's just like plays so well into like this type of zombie movie that Danny Boyle created. Like it's very fast paced, like everything from the zombies to how quickly our characters are moving from one location to another. So it just like adds to like the sense of urgency that he's like building in his movie. And then the score that one scene where they're driving like under a tunnel, they're like driving through a bunch of cars. They're banging mm -hmm. up and down. That was the one scene where I was like, man, the score is banging. It's like, it's such a wannabe techno score, but it's also just such a wannabe like hard rock, like mm -hmm. light synth score. It was like so like it was such an unpredictable score and it just made so much. It was just so much fun to like listen to. Yeah. And kind of going to what I was saying about it just not looking great. The top review on Letterboxd with 5000 likes is why was this filmed with a pink Motorola razor? So it's like, yeah, it does have that mm -hmm. fun footage feel where the camera work or the camera work is good, but the camera, like the look and feel of it is just. Very That's jarring. So funny. Odd. That's jokes. <laughs> yeah. And then the <laughs> the next the second top review, IMDb said that Killian Murphy spends 30% of this movie shirtless or naked, aka my favorite genre of movie. And lastly, <laughs> a com a complete list of all things that will always be scarier than zombies. Mm. Number one, men. <laughs> Which is true. They were very shitty in this movie. Uh, it's um, fair. Fun fact: Killian Murphy's nude scene at the beginning of the movie was done on a closed set at Killian Murphy's insistence and same if i ever had to do a nude scene i'd be like I, unless you need to be in the room to hold the camera or something dude fine, he could have no literally he could have just had a robe on <laughs> i know there is that was such an like because in a hospital bed like there'd be like a blanket or yeah they would have a bl like, something something so a blanket unneeded. a robe like i'm all for nudity in movies but that one was just like i saw it and i was like whoa are we talking yeah. about killing murphy's penis <laughs> yes that's <laughs> exactly, exactly. You what know, we're talking about just how unnecessary it was because we one of the fun facts was like he insisted to do it on a closed set where no one was allowed in the room and I, I was saying like yeah same if i had to do that scene i'd be like no one else is allowed in here when i'm doing this but that's jokes because like millions of people are still gonna <laughs> it's see on it. the film <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah it's in the film yeah. but the fact that he was so uncomfortable with it makes it even weirder because it does just seem like such like a there was just no need for it so if you like really had that big of an issue with it why didn't like I guess like I'm sure there's some symbolism of him being like naked and I have no clue or idea of where he is and like how vulnerable he feels. But like I feel like it's very easily could just have like a blanket covering just barely that part. So he didn't have to get traumatized. <laughs> we, on we've seen in many films they can cover it pretty easily. I don't know why. He, mm -hmm. If he was so bothered about it, just like don't do it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Uh, I one thing I forgot that I want to mention that I don't I didn't catch on how this was correlated, but I feel like it had to be. 
I can't remember who it was, but someone at the end of the movie, whether it was like one of the people in the military, one of the people that helped save them or at the very end had like a shaved head on the side too, which is the same as Killian Murphy's head being shaved at the beginning of the movie. Cause he had like brain surgery or something. So I was wondering if there's like a connection there. Like, is there something like that we were supposed to notice deeper about them both having like the sides of their head shaved? Like what did the doctors do to them? Was there something like that? Or was it just a weird coincidence? That guy just had a weird hairstyle and Killian Murphy had brain surgery or something. I, I don't know. I noticed that towards the end. I don't know, Seth, you picked up on that or if I'm just remembering weird no, things. But... So I think that actually might be something to do with this, but unfortunately I actually don't know what it is. I don't know if it's actually a, a thing in the film, which relates to earlier on in their life, perhaps what they went through, perhaps obviously what we saw with Killian Murphy at the start when he was in the coma. I think it might be something to do with that, but I'll be honest. I actually don't know. I've had this come, mm-hmm. I, weirdly enough. I think someone's asked me this before, but I don't know. Um, yeah, he could be right. Honestly, he could be right. Yeah, I feel like it had to be connected somehow. But um, I was talking with George while you were gone. So twenty eight weeks later, George hadn't seen it in ages. Doesn't really remember it. I hadn't seen it. Does it like because the end of this movie we were talking about how it's on an optimistic note where you're thinking the plane probably saw them and sur- saved them, but we don't know where they're going or what happens next. Yeah. And I was like, maybe they address on twenty eight weeks later. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Like twenty eight weeks later, like answer anything from what happens to them in twenty eight days later? Is it just a like, completely just different people and different story? Um, from what I remember, I don't think it answers anything. If I'm remembering correctly, it's been a couple of years since I watched it. I will say, 20 days later is like obviously a new set of people. 20 days later, weirdly enough, I I don't love the film, but I think it has one of the best opening sequences in any zombie film or any horror film ever. Fucking amazing. But after that, I don't think it directly addresses it. I think there might be some slight hints now and again. I don't remember correctly, but I think it's obviously mostly a whole a blank mm-hmm. slate, pretty much. Just a blank is it just slate. like another like a group of people trying to survive the zombies? Yeah, in a movie? different in a different period of time. From what I remember, anyway, it has been a few years, but I think it's just a different period of time, different people trying to survive. Exactly like you saw in the first one. Mm-hmm. Like well, then I wonder if any of the sequels are ever like solved the issue like if the zombies ever Connected stopped like 28 somewhere. years later like i don't know 28 <laughs> centuries later we still got the same <laughs> shit happening over yeah. and over again yeah 28 <laughs> days later killian murphy invents the nuclear bomb and eradicates them and it's solved <laughs> oppenheimer prequel yeah um but yeah that's all i had to say seth i know you had to step away is there anything else you want to make make sure you mention before we uh we conclude no so i apologies to everyone listening i had a big leaking bathroom issue very very annoying so i had to keep jumping out um Everything I kind of wanted to say has been covered. I think, like, like I said quite earlier, I'm, I'm sure you guys touched on it with the ending. It's very much institutionalization, you know, having the trust in officials, having the trust in the higher power and not, and, 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 and the, the, the trust being abused. And that's something we regularly see in a Western world when it comes to politics in general. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's a very, very impactful. I love the ending. I think it's kind of an optimistic ending, as you mentioned, and it kind of paves the way for optimism and things to come. Um, I'd be keen to see your thoughts, Tyler, on 28 weeks later. I'm not that keen on it from what I remember. I think it was okay, um, mm-hmm. but I wasn't thr- you know, thrilled by it like I am the first, and I don't love it by any means. Um, but I th- I'm sure you guys will have obviously covered most of it anyway, I'm assuming, whilst, whilst I was mm-hmm. gone. Yeah, I'm like such a completionist that I'm for sure going to watch 28 weeks later. Just same thing with like, I've had on my watch list, like my near term watch list for weeks to watch like Red Riding, Year of Our Lord, like 1980 and 1984. I have Is no that the one you watched with Andrew Garfield. Yeah, something. which wasn't it bad, but it just was kind of bland. Yeah. Like I didn't like love it. It wasn't a bad movie though, but I'm just like need to watch the final two so I can just be like done with that because my mind, I'm yeah. like, I need to get those ticked off. I can't just watch one of the franchise and yeah, whatever. But um, that does it for our review of 28 Days Later. Shout out to Remy Walker once again for the recommendation. But that'll do it for Real Quick Episode 101. We will see you on Monday with Real Talk Episode 58. Peace out. <laughs>